Hi guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome to my channel. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you guys for popping in. I want to start doing weekly vlogs because I enjoyed it so much doing daily vlog type planty stuff with you on a daily for December. So I want to keep doing it and you guys seem to really like it too. So I want to keep doing that and I can't do it all the time, unfortunately. So I'm just going to try to settle for weekly and hopefully you guys will like that too. So that's the plan. Today is day one for my weekly vlog. I will be taking one day off every week. So it's only going to be five or six days worth of vlog. So I'm just going to kind of go over each different day what I'm doing and yeah. Today is Monday and I just finished uh, filming my video on my 2022 planty wants or wish list 2022 plants. You'll definitely have it out before this video is out. So definitely go and watch that if you haven't watched it yet. I do have some different planty things to go over, but I did want to go over kind of what's new and what's changed and just some fun planty update. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. And then we'll kind of make a list for the rest of the week. All right, so this little area, if you have not watched my channel before, is a plant on boards that I set up and I did a whole big thing. The idea is for them to go ahead and attach like this philodendron micans, so that way they can grow and mature, which is great. This one and this one have attached. If you watched in December, then you know that I covered all this in plastic and I added a bunch more plants just to sit in here, especially this front row of plants, um, in order to put them in like a greenhouse, sort of, like a DIY greenhouse. I'll try to link the video below. But we had a pet come and visit with the family for the holidays and I wanted to keep all of these plants these toxic plants away from that pet. So this was all covered in plastic for about three weeks now. So I just took this off yesterday and unfortunately discovered that this lovely Phytus altissima had spider mites. So I sprayed it down and I treated it. I don't know how bad it got, but unfortunately all of these plants here were probably affected. Hopefully not these ones. Um, but definitely these ones that were touching it. So I'm going to have to treat all of them as well and spray them all down before I move them back to their regular places. I'm also going to be giving them a systemics. I'm not going to hold much faith in the systemic though um, because most of the time they don't work for today's spider mites, unfortunately. So, but good news is this, um, oh gosh, this Hoya Australis actually really, really enjoyed it. It even... Uh, got like a little bit of reddish tinge here not because they're being attacked by spider mites or anything But because this grow light is actually so amazing. So I'm pretty pretty excited um, It's also pushed out these new leaves as well You can see all of these air held roots on here this Hoya um, Oh shoot Hoya pubicalic splash has actually grown quite a bit as well and has pushed out new growth So I'm very very excited about that so I'm going to treat these and start moving these back and put all of these plants back where they go. I don't know why this Maranta is so cranky. I don't know if it needs more water. Um, I did give it some water yesterday or it could just be it suffered some root rot. Um, I don't know. We'll have to delve into that more after I get the rest of these plants out of here. So, but it looks like there's lots of new growth going on. Huh, this Mikeins is pulling double duty. Literally pushing one, two leaves out at the same time from the same node. So that's pretty cool too. I'm excited to see. There we go. I see it's attached right there. That's probably why. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm excited to see what happens with that. These guys. Um, this is Syngonium that had pests. This is a Calathea that had pests. This is a ficus audrey that did not have pests. So they all just need to be debagged. These two treated. That one debagged. Um, a lot of my plants just need a day of care, honestly. Where you just go in, you pull out all the dead leaves. This is a tenanthe, a brome, brome marks tenanthe. It's still happy, still pushing out lots of new growth. It just killed off the center ones that weren't getting much light. So that's what's going on there. Oh, this is another fun update. You can see it's pushing out a new leaf. This is the Calathea mosaica. 
and these other leaves suffered a lot of trauma over this last year or so, so I'm very excited to see this popping out. Hopefully it keeps going. This Stromanthe Trio Star has not stopped putting out new leaves this entire time, which is very exciting. So, same here with this Calathea Pinstripes. I really do think keeping them in jars this way, so you have the cash po underneath with water in it. I really think that that is the way to go. These two do need to be repotted though. You can see all of these roots out. And then these two Calathea over here have definitely been putting out new growth as well. This lovely Calathea Zebrina got thrips, so I've treated that twice. Um, no idea how it got thrips. None of the plants around it seem to have thrips, but I'm going to treat all of them anyway. This guy is going in um, quarantine, so there is that. But despite it all, still pushing out new growth. Still a very beautiful plant. If I cannot get rid of the thrips on it, I will be chopping it back down to the base and then regrowing it. And that's what I've done with a couple of Calatheas just because they needed it. Uh, as you can see, the string of hearts over here. It's actually pushing up quite a bit of new growth. We did get some sunshine today, which is great. It's starting to go down. It's a little later in the day. Just a lot of exciting stuff going on. So I think for today, I'm just going to work on, you know what? I'm just going to work on rearranging today. That's the plan. I'm going to work on rearranging today and wiping things down. So I know it might be a little bit boring, but I'll put on some music and just kind of jam out with you. So there we go. All right, let's get into it. I'm kind of working on this area over here. I have pulled um, this ficus here I pulled from down there. I treated it for spider mites just in case. This red on it is actually from being too dry and inconsistent watering because I didn't water it for eight days minimum when it was in the humidity chamber over here. So this is the ficus, uh, Audrey, that was in the bag. You can see over here that it was really dry too and that's why it's got the brown spot there. It has another one right there and another one right there. Um, it also did not unfurl this leaf here and that's because it was enclosed with not very much light over in this corner. But I did take the bag off of it. It does not have pests but I did spray it down for spider mites just in case. And I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be spraying down every plant in my collection and adding a systemic to every single one. The systemic will not help with spider mites very much, but it will help with the thrips and to prevent spread of thrips. And this way the thrips will be gone before they even get a chance to establish in the, any of these plants. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. This is a Burl Marks Tenanthe, and it was hanging right over here with my little ficus, but uh, I took it down. I removed all of the dead leaves in the center because it hadn't been wad watered in a while, and then I've just kind of set it up over here. It doesn't need as much light as the others, so this darker corner is actually going to be really good for it. I don't know if I'm going to stick with this setup. Right now, I'm just trying to move things to get them out. That's kind of what's going on right now. Um, you can tell that down here did not get very much, oh, what's the word? Down here on this Marble Queen did not get very much light at all. You can see all of these yellowing leaves down here. These are the older original leaves and they could not sustain themselves as much without as much light. It also looks like it dried out quite a bit and the older foliage will be the first to go on these, uh, Epipremnum pothos plants. So it did also push out quite a few new foliage quite a few new leaves so it looks like it's kind of rotating as far as a lot and or a lot on this side and then a little on this side as far as the variegation goes a lot a little a lot a little so it's kind of interesting to see that as it progresses but yep All right, so I got this area mostly cleaned up. I do have to wipe everything down, which is very important. And then the plants that were on these boards originally were put in the greenhouse. So when I clean out the greenhouse, I'll move them back out. <sighs> um, the Marble Queen and the Mykins are gonna stay. I don't know about this Philodendron Birkin. I think I might move it up here on this shelf over here. 
And I don't know if I'm gonna leave that brow marks there or not. I did decide, update that. <laughs> I did decide that all of the trees, all of the ficus trees that I had over here, I'm gonna put downstairs. That way I can keep up and spray them on a regular and they'll get more light down there. I'll put them in one of my big south facing windows downstairs and hopefully my kids leave them alone. We <laughs> shall see. But that's kind of the plan for now. I think I am gonna leave this guy up here and he likes the hot and humid more than the other two. It's not as hot or humid downstairs, but this guy kind of needs it quite a bit. So I'm gonna leave him up here. All right, so while I was rearranging things, I ended up discovering some plants that need to be potted up. They're all ready to be potted up. They're propagations and I want the space. So I'm gonna pot those. So I've got this jar of Fetonia propagations and it's taking up room on my shelves over there. So I pulled those off um, and I want, I found space for all the other ones and they're not ready to be potted up anyway. They're like um, Peperomia and Begonia cuttings, but this is Fetonia and they're all rooted. They need to get out of here anyway. So that'll free up this for other propagations later or you know, at the very least it'll free up that shelf. And then in here, Uh, one second. Here we go. So in here, these have all rooted. This one is only rooted a little bit. It needs to be rooted a little bit more. And I think it needs a little bit more light to do it. But these are all rooted. This is all rooted. This is a different kind of Fetonia than these. I might pot it separately. I'm not sure. Either way, it's all ready to be potted up. So what is in here is the same as this one and this one. So I'm going to get all of that together and pot it up. It is day two of my planty vlog for this week. Um, my child, <laughs> my son woke up and wanted to help me when I was repotting those things. So I kind of stopped my planty stuff there and we went and played some Animal Crossing. Um, drop down in the comments below if you play Animal Crossing as well. Maybe we can hook up on islands or whatever. Um, yeah, I try to get on every night. My kids really like it. So that's kind of something going on. But today I have a mess in the bathroom to clean up because I dropped a plant. The whole curtain rod fell down, everything fell, it made a very big mess. All three of these plants got tipped over. Um, I fixed it and I'm putting these two back up over here. But I think the third one made it too heavy so I'm going to hang that one in the bedroom and I really just need to get a better curtain rod for the bathroom. So I vacuumed up all the mess and I kind of suctioned back there. I do need to mop up because it was wet and then I need to put cords back and kind of move that little tree. Fabio. I love my Fabio. 
And water the fern, why not? <laughs> Happy fern! Alright, so I put the cords all back and everything, and now I just need to move this tree back over there. And I'm trying to hide the cords, it's not really working too well. Um, I'm trying to angle it because of the light as well. You see how it's kind of angled all funny away from the light? And I want it to kind of be pulled back that way. And this is the Boston Fern. It went way too long without water over the holidays. I just need to clean it out. We'll do it maybe next week. Maybe for the next vlog. It's still happy. It's still cleaning or putting out in fresh leaves and whatnot. Um, it's still doing good. It just needs a little bit of love. But it's so pretty. It's my favorite. They're really all my favorites, but I like this one a lot. <laughs> it's getting so big. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. It's actually starting to harden off down here on this daghorn fern, his little paddle. Oh, it's getting so big. Oh, I'm so excited. Good morning. It's another day of Plenty Vlog. I don't know what day it is in this vlog. The days are just blending together. It's been so crazy. I have no makeup. I have mom bun going on. We're just going to do it anyway. To hell with it. <laughs> um, so I want to move some stuff around in here. At least get this shelf finished cleaning off. Um, what else do I got to do? And I want to move some of those plants that are over there on the little stand. I also got my perlite in. So I think we're going to do some repotting. And we are going to do some pest treatment and we are going to finish this like I've been trying to do for, ugh, for days now. But yeah, so that's the plan. Let's get into it. this Hartley fern down here in with my Calathea macoyana and my Calathea white fusion. You can see the white fusion is getting a lot, a lot of light. I do not use distilled water, which is why you'll see it has crispy bits there. It happens. But the Calathea macoyana doesn't seem to be minding it too much. Check out that beautiful leaf. Oh my God, such a beautiful plant. It comes in golden and then on the back so you can see has this beautiful reddish tint going on, typical of most Calathea. This is actually getting too much light, so it has lost its purple coloration, and it is just back to the green and white. So too much light will cause Calathea to lose their coloration, and then not enough light will cause them to lose their variegation and sometimes their coloration as well. So it's really important to get just the right amount of light. And apparently there's just enough light for this Calathea macoyana to pop out some new leaves. So I'm excited for that. All right, I do have a little bit of a space here uh, left over, so I wanna see if I can find something to kind of fit in there too. So I did find this speckled variegated Peperomia caparata, and I think it would fit in there perfectly. So I'm gonna kind of tuck that in. So I was able to get it out, and you can see the variegation right there. And if it loses too much light, then it will not produce the variegation anymore, as you can see. So I've got to get it in a little bit of a better light so that it can keep making these beautiful, beautiful leaves. So, and there's just enough room down there. I'm just going to kind of tuck that in. Alright guys, so I was going to repot these Calathea, but I ran across a problem. I need my horticultural charcoal. 
in order to repot them. My mix definitely calls for horticultural charcoal um, because it filters out all of the impurities and helps get rid of chemicals and soaks up all of the hard minerals. And if I were to use a fertilizer, it would absorb it and then slow release it. So it's actually really, really critical and I don't have any. So we're gonna have to make a run and see if we can find some horticultural charcoal in order to repot these beauties. At the very least, you guys can enjoy these beautiful calathea leaves. Ugh, this is the pinstripe calathea. And even um, my stepmom came over and she saw this plant and she was like, oh wow, I love that. So I'm gonna have to divide some of this and give it to her at some point. But yeah, I mean, out of all the plants, this was the one that she was just like, oh, hello. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And there's the Calathea Freddy back there and the rattlesnake Calathea. Uh, it's looking a little sad. I think it might need some water. But, yep. Oh, I wanted to show you. <gasps> Check it out. Check out this new beautiful leaf. So even if we don't repot it, you get to see this beauty. So we're gonna quickly go on a little journey and try to hunt down some charcoal and then I want to get another aquarium um, because I want to do another terrarium soon so I'm gonna go hit up the stores and see if I can find that I'm not bringing my mic or anything I will try to get some clips and we'll kind of see how that goes and I'll end up putting that in here for you and yeah so that's kind of the plan it's a little sunny and then foggy and sunny and foggy and I don't know what's up with the weather but I don't even know what this is gonna look like we'll figure it out <laughs> But yeah, so that's kind of the plan from there. I really want to repot these calathea, so I need to get this charcoal in order to do that. So hopefully these stores will have some, that'd be great. So, all right, see you in a little bit. downstairs so sorry if this is like all wonky and whatnot but I did want to show you and kind of update you went to the store did not find charcoal they only had vermiculite which is frustrating I want to try vermiculite I just don't want to try vermiculite right now right now I want to repot my dang calathea and right now I want some horticultural charcoal to do that and it was very frustrating that I went to three different stores and didn't find any but they had piles of vermiculite everywhere so maybe we'll pick up some vermiculite soon. That might be in the in the thing. It's just not gonna work in place of charcoal. It's not the same filtration thing. So unfortunately, I am going to have to wait and order some horticultural charcoal. So that's what we're doing right now. But I did win and I found my terrarium that I was looking for, even though like I tried to order it from them and they told me they didn't have any and canceled my order, but I went in there and they had three of them. So I'm very excited. I only got one, but I'm very excited to have found it, even though, you know, yes. So let me show you. Okay, so here is the terrarium. Ten glass. Or it's a, uh, what do you call it? Like a ten gallon glass aquarium. They always seem to leave them in this type of box and then they put them on the very top shelf. And this is at Walmart. And I got these, I think it was like $15.98, including tax. Um, so, but here it is, here's kind of what it looks like. Um, it doesn't come with a lid or anything. I buy acrylic sheets from Amazon and I'm gonna do a whole separate video um, on my, my newest terrarium I'm super excited about. Um, but yeah, I definitely wanted to show you guys that I got this. So pretty stoked. So that's a win for the day. Going out was not a complete and total waste. So yep, we, I will update you in just a little bit on the next thing. I have my greenhouse over there and then there's not really any plants, just a bookshelf over here. So I'm going to set this up as like my little quarantine zone. I will be covering it. I'm treating, I don't know, I might cover it. Um, this Calathea got spider mites. So unfortunately, my Calathea rufabarba got spider mites, and then I believe this lovely Syngonium was the outbreaker of the spider mites, and it's kind of spread from this one. But both of these I knew had spider mites, and I treated them, and then I bagged them. I have now unbagged them, 
and I've treated them again, I will be giving them a systemic and continual treatments. But here in the center of the room, I'll pass by them every day and I will remember to give them their treatments and they won't be forgotten and lost in a corner. They also won't be able to spread their spider mites to anybody else. So this is gonna be kind of the pest quarantine zone over here, this little shelf. So that's what's going on with that. So over here is where I've been treating them. You can see that I removed the foliage that was just too far damaged or had a, a large amount of spider mites that I could physically see with the naked eye. I also put all of the dead foliage from that burl marks over here as well. And I am using this as a place to hold my plants and then spray them with the super insecticidal soap. So this will protect my carpet. Um, that's the super insecticidal soap over there. And then that is the rag that I'm using to wipe down all of these shelves because spider mites will fall off your plants and they will land on the surfaces around your plants and you have to wipe those off and to make sure that whatever other plants that you put on them don't spread it. So that's sometimes people think that you just have to treat the plants. No, you have to treat the surrounding environment as well. Three days later. All right, guys, finally got the charcoal. Super exciting stuff. I am super excited. And then I heard um, one of you guys on my Instagram, I showed that I had gotten this. And one of you guys said that this was one of the, uh, the best brands for different potting mediums, especially the cactus soil. So I'm definitely gonna put that on my list to try. Um, but I wanted to pass that knowledge on because I haven't tried this before. I'm very excited to. So this is the, what I ended up getting. And we're gonna go ahead and mix up a mix uh, for the Calathea so that we can finally repot them. Uh, and that's the plan.
my greenhouse and getting this all situated. I'm pretty excited for it. Um, I think it looks, it looks all right. I've got a lot more to do. Um, I pulled out some stuff over here. It's definitely got to continue to be reorganized, but this is kind of where I'm at with this. Probably in the next vlog, I'll really get hardcore into organizing it a bit better, but I wanted to kind of update you guys on what happened to all this stuff. Um, if you happen to watch that video. Forgot to add that over here is kind of what I ended up doing. I just put a spider plant over here. Um, and then I have the fiddle leaf fig and then everything else went downstairs. Um, well, it's in a pile to go downstairs. I'll put it down in a minute. I'll put it down in a minute. So, and that's kind of what we got going on there. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this vlog. Hopefully you enjoyed. Definitely drop your comments down below. Let me know if you play Animal Crossing too, what plants you're planning on repotting. Are you excited for spring? Um, and how's the sunshine in your area? Because mine's kind of coming and going. Um, yeah. So don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified for the next one. I'm going to be trying to do these weekly vlogs every week or so, obviously. Um, this one took two weeks because it was just a little bit more. And I was waiting for that charcoal. I had to wait a little bit for that charcoal to come in. So that was kind of, kind of held things up a little bit. But I'm excited that we got it all situated. So thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.